we are going to rotate some objects. What I got in here is a empty Unity project. And let's create a script. Drag your script and drop it inside your cube and then open up the script. So to rotate an object, there's a couple of ways of doing that. You can snap a rotation and you can lerp a rotation. So let's do all of them. So first let's do a snap rotation. So what a snap rotation is, it's a one type executed code, just like this. So after having created a new method inside of it, we're going to write one line of code. So in here, we can do a couple of things. First, let's get an instance of our selected object, which is simply transform.rotation. Now, in order to apply rotation to this very object, we're going to need a reference quaternion. Up here, we're going to define a starting quaternion. So what we're going to do is say public quaternion, and we're going to call it start what? Quaternion. And then to initialize this quaternion, in, in the start method, we're going to say start quaternion is equal to transform.rotation. Now this will get the starting position of the rotation. And then in here, we're simply going to say transform.rotation is equal to start quaternion. And that's all we have to do. Now we need a method to activate this snap rotation. So let's save that. And obviously we have a start rotation in here. So let's create a button to activate this rotation. We're going to drag it up a little bit. So let's set the behavior for this button. So simply drag in your object and drop it inside this slot. And then we have new behavior script. And then in here we have our method that we just created. So let's hit play and let's see what we have in here. So we're going to see that it, it obviously initialized this starting quaternion. And now what we can do to actually make this work is we're going to go into our scene and then we're going to rotate it a little bit. So now, we, as we can see, it's a little bit rotated. And now if we hit this button, it should go back to the starting position. And there it is. It's in the starting position. But what if you want this cube to rotate slowly inside this starting position? Well, to do that, we need a method that runs in the update function. So let's set that up. Let's say transform dot rotation is equal to quaternion dot lerp. Now this lerping will allow us to rotate this transform gradually. And it obviously has to be inside of a update function. So what it takes is the current position, which is transform dot rotation. So let's let's write that in here. Transform dot rotation. And then for the second argument, it takes the desired rotation, which is our starting quaternion. And then for the third argument, it takes the time that this lerp function will take. So let's declare a float variable. Let's call it lerp time and let's default it to one. And now in here, we need to use a time.delta time function times that lerp time. And there we have it. Now, the problem with this is that this method will continue to run all the time as the game starts playing. So we need a way to trigger this whenever we want. So let's make a flag. Let's say public boolean rotate. And then we're going to simply ask if rotate, then we're going to rotate this uh, transform position. And now to trigger this rotate, we don't need a separate function. And the reason for that is because we can simply click rotate in here and it's going to work just fine. So let's hit play and let's see what happens. Remember, our lerp time is set to one. Let's go back. Let's rotate this object a little bit. And now let's hit this rotate. It rotates, but very slowly. So if we want that rotation to be a little bit quicker, we obviously increase this lerp time. So let's set it to like 20. Let's uncheck the rotate. And let's go back to rotate this to a desired position. So now if we hit this rotate, it should rotate a little bit quicker. But what if you want to add rotation constantly to this object? So let's do that. Let's define another Boolean and let's call it rotate constantly. And then of course, we're going to ask if rotate constantly is true. And then if it is true, we're going to write our function. So to rotate constantly, there's two ways. The first way is adding to this start quaternion. And the second way is a little bit easier. We're simply going to say transform dot rotate. And then this takes a vector three variable. And then it takes a optional space relative to which we're not going to use for now. 
So let's use this rotate for now and let's define a vector 3. Instead of saying new vector 3 and then in here defining our points, we're simply going to say vector 3 dot write times the amount. So for the amount, we're going to obviously make it modular. So we're going to say rotate amount. And then up here, we're going to define a new float variable. And then we're going to call it rotate amount. We're going to save that and we're going to go back to unity. Now we have a rotate amount, which is set to one. And then we have a rotate constantly flag, which is unset. Let's hit play and let's see what happens. Now this rotate amount is set to one. All we have to do is hit this rotate constantly and this should rotate. Indeed, it's rotating, but it's rotating into the X axis. How could you change that? Well, to change that, we're going to use again a vector three. And then instead of saying right, we can say up or we can say forward. Now let's set this vector three to forward and let's see how this object rotates. Let's set this back to one and let's hit this rotate constantly. Now it rotates again into the wrong axis. That's no problem. We can fix that by setting this forward into up. Save that, go back to Unity, hit play and hit rotate constantly. Now we can see it rotates constantly into the desired rotation. What we can do now is uncheck this rotate constantly and hit this rotate. It should snap it back to its initial position. And obviously you can play around with the values. You can set this rotate amount to like 50 and it's going to rotate ridiculously quick and it's going to snap ridiculously quick as well. So let's set this back to like 10. We have a smoother rotation, a little bit smoother. But what happens if we check both of them to true? Let's see what happens. Well, what can we see in here? We can see a almost stationary object. But if we pay attention to the Y axis, we're going to see that it's definitely not stationary. Well, let's explain a little bit what is happening in here. Well, let's open up the code and let's see what happens. So what's happening in here is we have a rotation that takes the transform into the starting position, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, meaning the base position. And then after this is getting set to 0, we have this other function that sets it to a desired position. So this is a common issue that you're going to have regardless when you're building a game and the workaround for that is adding another filter in here. So what we can do in here is ask if this other rotation is not being played. So a simple way to do that is to ask if the rotate is false. Now what we've done is we've made it impossible for this rotation to execute while this other rotation is being executed. So we can see that working if we hit play and then we let's let's boost these lerp times to like 10 and let's hit this rotate. Well, this rotate is not be, not working and that is not true. It is working, but it is always setting it to zero. And that's why it looks like it's not working. Now let's activate both of these. We're going to see that it does not shake. So we so we have this zero and we have our game still being playable. We can uncheck one of these and it obviously works fine. Now, <clears throat> now what if you want this quaternion converted into a vector three, into these three variables instead of these four variables? Let's take a look at how you can do that. And let's set a, a new vector three. We're gonna call it public vector three. We're gonna call it quad quaternion. And then again, we're gonna initialize this vector three into our start method. So we're going to say quaternion to vector is equal to. Now the way you convert the quaternion into a vector 3 is by using a Euler angles. So here is the syntax for that. You simply say your quaternion, which is start quaternion dot Euler angles. Now this will convert this quaternion inside into this new vector 3 variable. And now this, since we have this block set to position 0 and rotation 0, let's change it up a little bit. Let's rotate it into random axis and let's try to play our game. Okay, we're going to see that this quaternion has converted the values into the vector 3 and they are all correct. So we're going to see 1.59 in here and it's the same in here, except for the Y values. This is a little bit messed up. I hope it gets fixed by the Unity dev team. 
and this is also showing the right metrics. Now the reason why you might need to transfer your quaternion into a vector three variable is because you might want to use this lerp function. And then instead of setting it to a set position, you can change that position depending on the vector you want. So what you can do is obviously do the opposite of this one. Let's define a new vector three and let's call it public vector three reverse quaternion. To reverse this quaternion, we need a couple of lines. Now, since we're reversing a vector three into another quaternion, we're gonna need another quaternion reference. So let's copy that and let's say start quaternion one. It's, it's getting a little bit messy, but I hope you don't mind. Now, the syntax for transforming a vector three into a quaternion is like this. First, you get your quaternion that you wanna turn to vector three. In this case, it's this start quaternion. So we take that start quaternion and that is equal to a whatever value we want to transfer it to. In this side, in this case, this vector three, reverse quaternion. So we're gonna copy that. And in here, we're gonna say quaternion dot Euler. As we can see, it takes in three parameters, X, Y, and Z, which is a vector three. Now we can obviously pass in three fluid variables, but we can also pass in a vector three variable. So let's pass in our object that we just created and let's close this line. Now let's see if it actually works. We have our cube rotated to a random position. Let's rotate a little bit more. And then we have all our values. So what should happen is that this quaternion one should be the exact rotation as this new vector three that we just introduced. So let's change these values a little bit. Let's make them, I guess, random and let's hit play. As we can see, it obviously worked. It changed this vector three into a quaternion. Now, what this might be useful for is that you might want to lerp a rotation into a set vector three. Now, instead of creating a new quaternion, what you can do is delete this line and then pass it in here. So instead of saying start quaternion, we can say quaternion dot Euler and then in here we pass in our vector three, which is reverse quaternion. And now if we hit play, this cube, instead of going in the position zero, it should go into this position that we set in here. So before we hit rotate, let's boost this lerp time to 10 and let's hit rotate. As we can see, it works like a charm. What if we want to move this inside the play mode? We can simply drag this and it's smoothly transitions between rotations. So what you can do is make this lerp time maybe a little bit quicker. And now it feels like it's snapping into position. Okay, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a little bit of a simple video, but I have found it to be very difficult until I get the hang of it. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next episodes.